Okay. Um, so welcome everybody. This is our teaching and learning call for Wednesday, October 5th. And, um, and today we're lucky enough to have Julia Morgan uh, here with us. She's going to talk a little bit about CSS in lessons and the Sakai lessons tool. Um, but before we do that, um, we usually start off with just a few announcements. Um, so if you'd like to follow along on the agenda, the link is there in the chat. Um, please uh, sign in when you get a moment. And um, I just want to remind everybody about the Sakai Virtual Conference coming up in November. It's going to be a two-day event today, um, this year. The first day is going to be traditionally Sakai presentations like we've done in the past. And then the second day is sort of a post-conference day. We're having a couple different workshops that day on some course content authoring tools that integrate with Sakai. So um, if you're interested in uh, learning more about Zerte or Materia, those are the two tools that we're going to be offering workshops on. Um, that'll be happening on Wednesday, the second day of the event. Um, but the, uh, the call for proposals is currently open, and we're, um, we're soliciting uh, lightning talk proposals. We want to keep the agenda kind of um, exciting and and moving quickly so we, we've scheduled some different rounds of lightning sessions throughout the day um where we have like you know seven or eight minute presentations in a block um so uh, we're really interested in getting folks to submit all sorts of, of lightning talks so if you have maybe a course that you want to show off um, if you have a tool that you really like, you want to show like a particular strategy. Um, if there's something that's new, like a new developed tool or a new technique, um, anything like that is is perfectly great for um, for lightning talks. So please um, feel free to submit those proposals. The deadline is coming up fast. It's the deadline is um, October seventeenth, which is uh, just about two weeks away. Um, and, uh, and the conference itself is about, I don't know, five and a half, just under six weeks away. So that's why the deadline is, we're not going to be able to extend it much because, um, we'll be right on top of the event if we do. Um, so anyway, get those proposals in and I hope that you'll, um, present and I hope that you'll attend and it should be a great, um, should be a great time. It usually is. So, uh, and we also have lots of fun and prizes and contests and things too. So, um, it's usually a, a lot of fun. Um, the other announcement that I wanted to kind of put out there to let you guys think about it um, and see what sort of reaction people have is um, I was wondering what this group thinks about potentially combining our call structure with the UX call. Um, so the for those of you who don't normally attend this meeting, the, the teaching and learning usually meets twice a month. We meet the first and uh, third Wednesdays in the morning. And the UX group um, used to meet right after this one. They used to meet at 11 um, on the same you know, weeks of the month. But then the UX folks shifted to afternoon because one of the um, leaders of the group couldn't make the 11 o'clock slot. She had a standing meeting. So they shifted to um, to 2 p.m. And, um, and so we've been meeting at 2 p.m. But now um, the, uh, the uh, Sean, who was leading the group most recently, um, has to step back from that to take care of more you know, local things at his institution. And so um, so there's sort of a vacancy for the leadership of the UX group. So I stepped in as a coordinator to keep that group going. But what I was wondering is, would it make sense to kind of merge the two groups a little bit? Because um, there is a lot of times a, a quite a bit of overlap between teaching and learning and UX. Um, and I was wondering if, uh, if maybe we shifted our time to 11 which is a little bit easier for some of the folks on the West Coast. We do have a few West Coast folks from Pepperdine that often attend the UX call. Um, so I was wondering if if we shifted our time from 10 a.m. Eastern to 11 a.m. Eastern, and we kind of split our time um, such that maybe the first 
week of the month is teaching and learning focus and the third week of the month is UX focus, we might get some cross pollinization there. So anyway, that was just my thought. I, I would love to hear how you guys feel about it because we don't have to do this. This is just me kind of brainstorming. So anybody, any thoughts? If you don't have a microphone, feel free to, to type it into the chat. I see Jennifer typing. You like the presentations in Tina? Yeah, we would still have presentations, but often we find ourselves kind of struggling to fill the, um, the topics with presenters. So we end up defaulting to like a Jirapalooza a lot of the time. Um, so I was thinking that, that some of those could be you know, maybe UX Jiras instead of TNL Jiras or a mix of both. All right, well, I'll let you guys kind of digest that. Um, I know some of our regular attendees aren't here today, so I'm going to ask this question again. And I haven't posed the question to the UX folks either, so I'll be doing that later today too. Um, so there's still kind of a lot of discovery that needs to happen before we would make any change. But I wanted to just kind of put it out there to see what, um, what sort of reaction I got from people. Um, all right, so now I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Julianne to talk about lessons. And um, Julianne, I'm going to give you presenter here so you can share your screen if you would like. And take it away. Great. Well, thank you so much. Um, I'm happy to be here to talk about lessons and CSS, but I'm going to preface this by saying also that uh, we have kind of moved away from doing custom CSS at, U at UD just because it became very difficult to maintain, but I'm happy to talk about it as much as I can. I am by no means a coder. <laughs> I just kind of fool around in the CSS until something makes sense. And usually I'm taking someone else's file and tweaking it essentially. Um, so just to start, I don't know where people are at in terms of their knowledge of what this even means. Um, so I'll kind of start from the beginning. Please interrupt me. Please ask questions. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to know the answers, but I'm, I would like to have more of a conversation about it. Um, so let me make sure I got my screen shared correctly here. Can you see what looks like uh, a different version of Sakai? <laughs> yes. Yes. OK, great. So. Um, just to get started, we call Sakai at Isidore at University of Dayton. Um, Isidore is the patron saint of knowledge and learning and students in the internet, which is always shocking to me that the patron saint, um, there's a patron saint of the internet back in, back thousands of years ago, hundreds of years ago. But yeah, I think you can assign things after the fact, so that's kind of cool. Um, so we call it Isidore, and we do a lot of customizations here. We're very um, lucky to have, right now we have kind of we have two developers on staff and David Bauer, whose name you may have heard, he's been, he's been around Sakai for years now and he's technically a director now, so he's not supposed to be doing any coding, but he still does. Um, and then Paul Dagnall is, he's now an instructional designer, but um, he no, definitely knows his way around some code as well. So we're, you know, we have a huge benefit over on, on probably many other institutions in that we have some ability to customize the way Sakai looks. And um, so I can show some CSS examples that we've done in the past as a starting point. Um, CSS is, it's, I think it stands for cascading styling sheets, um, but basically it's just a way to like override the, uh, the way that a page looks. And you can do that within the lessons tool in Sakai. Um, I think <laughs> that's my understanding of what I'm doing at least anyway. Um, so just to get started, I, was, I thought I'd show like a bad example just to kind of give you an understanding as to why we don't really do it as much anymore. I think it still could be done, but we just have moved away from it because honestly, Sakai like looks 
so much better now than when we started doing custom styling um, that we don't really feel the need to do much. And if we were to do something, we'd probably like try to, if we wanted to change the way something looked, we'd probably try to actually get it in the base code rather than trying to overwrite it with the CSS. So I was just pulling up some examples here. Um, is this the old one? Yeah, this is the old one. So here is an example of some CSS that we've done on this lessons page. These buttons are obviously not <laughs> default button types in Sakai. And these actually look okay still. Um, it's got this animation on it. It looks like a ribbon. Um, I personally just think it looks so outdated at this point. I just think it's, uh, and it's just big. I don't know. So the one, one problem with CSS is that styles change over time. And so while this might have looked cool, years ago, it kind of doesn't look as cool anymore. And in some ways, it's kind of just a distraction. Um, so it's still being used throughout a lot of our courses uh, at UD, but uh, it, it's, a, it's a pain to maintain it. Um, but what ultimately what we did was, uh, I think Paul, my colleague Paul actually wrote this code. And so if I go into my settings here at the top of the page, you'll see that there's this there's a spot for a custom CSS file, which well, actually that is in that is in base Sakai, right? This ability to yes, upload this. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes I can't remember. Um, <laughs> but basically we have a we have a whole host of different CSS files that have been uploaded over time. I think the idea is if you name your file default.css, it'll actually override your CSS for um, all of your lessons pages. It doesn't look like we're doing that here. So I think this CSS file is applying to just this page. Um, and then if I, I guess I can, let me go and download it so we can actually take a look at the code. Uh, if I go to, where's resources? There it is. All <laughs> CSS files end up in a folder on our platform in something called lb-css. And um, so if I look at this code, Paul's defined, a, I think, a, a class or something here called homepage ribbon circle, circle button and stuff, which I believe for developers, it's definitely, you want to be as generic as possible when you're describing <laughs> your code. <laughs> so good work, Paul. Um, so he's got some, uh, I'm trying to even figure out like where the, where the ribbon part of this is coming in, but I don't even know code well enough to be able to say. I'm thinking that there's some probably transform thing that's going to define the movement of it. But again, I really, I don't really know. Transform. Here's some transform. So I think that's actually moving the button when you hover over it. Um, so he's written this code and then he just uploads it to that page and the buttons um, get changed. Once you, I think you have to actually click in the uh, layout and style section. He, he had to um, type in the class here to make the buttons actually get changed. And he had to do that for each button, if that makes sense. So these look okay, but if we go into module two, things look a little bit, I think, like bad. <laughs> like it just looks so outdated at this point. Um, like I really, really, I'm totally being mean to Paul here. I feel really bad, but I really hate these section headers. I hate these now. I mean, they looked okay back, back when we first started them, but now, especially with these, like the border of the text object is now outside of the border on the section. And I think that looks horrible. <laughs> I'm trying to work with some of these. I'm actually rebuilding this course right now. This is the, her like spring course, but I also understand this is just like a, it's a, like a never ending battle. Like I'm never going to be able to fight all. <laughs> I'm never gonna be able to redesign everyone's pages, but I just hate the way this looks so much. Um, but it's supposed to have, you know, it has this nice gradient on it. It's got this nice, um, I think we even had written custom code to make it expand and collapse back in the day. Now that's obviously something we can set. Um, we can set that in the settings to make it collapsible. But um, th that used to be something we actually CSS in before. Um, I think everything else. Oh, no, this is this important dates box. This is all CSS. I can tell because this shadow is enormous. That's like way too big of a shadow. It's like popping. It's like three dimensional. And I don't like that. Like I'm a, I like a little bit of a shadow. I don't like this much shadow. Um, it's just, it's just, I, I, I don't know. I, I just don't like any of this anymore. So um, the other thing too, is that one reason why we really don't do too much CSS is that because we also have dark theme available. 
And so all this does not look good in dark theme. <laughs> and we could try to make code to fix that, but it's just not worth the time. Uh, when, when the default section colors that come with Sakai work beautifully in dark theme. So it's just, it, it just is broken. The other thing too, is that like every time we upgrade to a new version, we are like, a lot of the CSS just breaks across the board. And so, you know, every time we upgrade, if there's a site that I know that I've put CSS into, I kind of have to like, I put it on my list of like sites I need to go back and check to make sure they're like, they don't look horrible, horrible once we've upgraded. So that's, it's just a pain. <laughs> but that said, there are some things that you might want to do with CSS. Like the one thing that I will still sometimes do with CSS is I will actually just, upload a new color to the section headers essentially. So for example, um, this is a site that I built last year and it's kind of, I, I only did this because I knew that the site was going to be used for a limited amount of time. So again, going back to that idea of upgrading Sakai, I was like, I'm, I know that this site's going to be used for like four months and then I don't need to worry about it breaking when we go to a different version because it won't ever be looked at again. But basically I just wanted to have a different color. Um, so I built, this and I have it, I have this color kind of designed to match the the infographic colors. So uh, Bonnie would like a screenshot of the profile drop down menu. Yes, definitely. I will do that. Um, Bonnie, 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 Bonnie. I will get your name from the notes and do that. Um, thank you for asking. I, I just got it, Julianne. You, oh, okay, great. Oh, well, perfect. Like oh, perfect. Okay, good. So I don't need to send it. Excellent. Yeah, we've been advertising this a lot. It's been, actually, I just posted on our, we have a student Twitter feed and on our student Twitter feed, I actually just advertise um, our dark mode because it is spooky season. So I we don't really like take measurements of who is actually switched. Uh, but can, can you see my tweet here? October equals spooky equals dark theme. <laughs> kind of fun. Um, so. We have a, I think we have a decent number of people actually using dark theme now, and we've done a lot of work to make dark theme work um, because we also have uh, learning apps, which are Sugi tools built into Sakai at this point. And those, well, shoot, this site doesn't look good. So like, that's one thing also with dark theme is like, now I have to put on my list that anytime I build a site, I have to make sure like all my fonts show up correctly. So clearly something's not right here, but the site's not used. So I'm not going to worry about it. Um, but basically this teal color is a custom color that I wrote some CSS for and just, I didn't change anything else. I just was literally changing the section color because I wanted something to look a little bit different than the default colors that are available. So that like, if I were to, I think I'm actually even just overriding the color here. It's not something, so usually we make it so that actually, you can set. It's in ours. It's in, in. Um, well, the, uh, the color is, uh, something that you can set here in the column settings. Um, we have all these colors. I think that that's in base Sakai as well. All these colors are, um, but I just wanted a different, we have, there is a teal, but I wanted something that was a little bit darker than just regular teal. So I just found a nice, I found a color that I liked and just wrote some code to over override the section color so that's all i did on this and that's all that's like the most i would ever do at this point but to show you a different example of something i had done a couple years ago um i think it's in this page campus resources no sorry i'm i thought i favorited this before i got on but maybe not uh nso And so let's see what this is. Um, shoot, I had it pulled up and now it's gone. Where is it? But basically we had, I had a bunch of buttons with different icons on them. It was NSO dupe, maybe it's this one. Certification. Sorry, I'm totally failing here. 
resource fair. Yes. Okay. So here are some buttons that I, so similar to those ribbon buttons we first looked at, these are um, buttons without animations, except for that the color changes when you hover over them, but there's also icons in front of the buttons. And so in the CSS for this site, um, you would see that I have like a, a class written essentially for that little person running. So here are my CSS um, for that button. I've changed it to icon gone. And this, this is the, that's the icon. It's FNTA run essentially. And those icons I pulled from font or is it font awesome? Yeah, font awesome. So I just essentially refer to the, like if I wanted to use the stapler, I would use, um, I think it's this E5AF is I think the code that I'm actually pulling or something. Um, if I were to look at the code for this one, let's see what I did. Um, so you can see also that I'm not good at things by the number of CSS <laughs> files I've written. So I have at least 71 <laughs> files where I've made iteration after, because I'm not good at it. So I just kind of like, I'll try, I'll change something in the code and I'll upload a new version and it won't work. And then I'll try something else and I'll upload a new version and it won't work. So you can see, I really don't know what I'm doing. Um, but in terms of the file for that, let's, this should be interesting to see. I go down to the very bottom. I can see. So here are all my icons. So icon options for the button. I have a ton of different buttons. So church, um, a graduation cap, map signs, plane. So I just like, you can see I've got, well, there's not actually as many as I thought, but there's a lot of different icons. And I just pull, um, it's called the font family is this one. And then this is that code. And then I, I think this is the weight of the icon. <laughs> Background equals magenta. I like that. <laughs> You just have a CSS code line in the setting, not in the file. Yeah, I mean, there's so it's pulling from this file still, but I'd still have to go to the button itself and make the change on the button. Um, it's it, but it's just referencing this file essentially. That makes sense. The other thing on these pages um, that I did was this is in much longer ago now is um so more more of these buttons but then we'd also i'd also done basically a different color section here i feel like this used to look nicer but basically this is like our this is like our ud branded blue and so i wrote a custom class for the for the section headers here so not not much oh this checklist is also css um because it's got an actual it's got like this little check mark here and then it's got some big shadow around it. Again, that was probably a Paul thing um, because uh, that's a lot of, that's a, that's a lot more shadow than I would have done. One other thing um, that Paul has done that I actually do like is math 207, 22, 21. Go back one more here. 21 yeah so and i don't use this again just because it's like it's hard to maintain but paul wrote a, a sim css to split a section header into two which is something i've always wanted <laughs> to have the ability to do um, i'm not using it myself anywhere but and it's kind of hard to tell in this view but uh Usually a section header just goes all the way horizontal across, but he's actually written it so that there's a break. And so kind of you have two, um, I think he, the, and then the, the heading of this section, I think it's actually in the, in the first text object. Yeah. So this is somehow referring to the CSS on the page. So it's this unit header class that he's written. So that's a nice one. I like that. And by the way, I'm happy to share any of these CSS files. Um, I'm, I'm sure Paul doesn't care either. Um, I just caution that, you know, I don't know enough about the CSS to make it work on your on your version of Sakai. Um, but I, I mean, theoretically it should, I would think. 
Um, the, I guess the one thing though is that we, I think we do have bootstrap written into our base code of the, of the portal or of our skin. Yes, that's the word. Um, so I think we can reference bootstrap classes without having to do extra work or pull in extra stuff. Um, and bootstrap is this thing. We don't have them all, but I know we have some elements of bootstrap brought in. So we're able to reference those without having to do like too much extra finagling. Um, what was else was I going to say They're about, oh, the, what I do these days is I was going to show you the, my approach that I take. So I'm rebuilding a couple of courses right now. Um, if I go to, is this, yes, no, this is not the, this is the new one. Um, I, I, tr so I try to stick as close as possible to just like base Sakai without doing any custom CSS because it just has become too much of a, a, a pain to maintain. So the things I like to do now is I like to just use what's available in base CSS. So I'm using gold for this course. It's kind of the theme. And then what I really like doing is I think these templates are now a feature um, or going to be a feature in a, a version of Sakai coming up or something. Um, but in the add text video or image area for us, uh, there's a templates button. Well, actually it's in all, it's in any place you have the rich text editor, there's the templates button. and um, we have these like conversation callouts and I can upload a picture of the instructor and then write some kind of quote. Um, I, you know, I have all, I like this one a lot. This one's specific to UD, but we're a Marianist institution. So I always, this has, this is the Marianist logo. So I like to like connect the course content to Marianist principles. Um, let's see, I'm going to screw that up, of course. I always have to do this nonsense here where I have to like right in a break. Um, I do this alert. This is the one I use all the time. Here's what I really like to do. So I go into the source and instead of having a gold lighter four for every single call out that I'm doing with this, I can change it to be, I think navy is one that will work. Nope. Cause I think it has to be like lessons color navy. Um, I'll just do blue. That should work. But now I have blue. And I can change this to be, if I want it to be lighter seven, that will work. If I want it to be darker, now I've got like a really dark one. And I'll just change the icon a lot of the time to be something that's more relatable to what I'm trying to say. Like I'll use this a lot of time to warn students about like shifts in the calendar or, you know, differences about things that are upcoming. Or I'll use some other font awesome icon. Um, Oh gosh, I can't think of anything right now, of course. Map, maybe? Map. And I'll change the font size here. So I'll, I'll really make use of the ability of just what's available through a little bit of coding without having to upload any CSS files to make things look a little bit nicer. So just to show you what this page is looking like. Um, let's see. Yeah, so I have like this whole panel here that's it's using the um, it's using this instructor insight panel as its base, but then I just change the icon and I change the color, and this is kind of like a standard panel that I I post I just copy and paste into anything that has anything to do with uh, the team projects for this course. So uh, you'll see I have another I have another call out here that's a different color, and the whole idea is just trying to draw students' attention to changes about. Um, or things to especially be aware of, essentially, for that task. Um, so yeah, that's that's usually what I do these days. Is I I stick to the <laughs> core availability, and I don't try to do too much custom because it it really it's just has caused me more grief, and I can't take any more emails from instructors saying this thing's not working now, or this thing doesn't load anymore, or, this thing looks horrible now. <laughs> like no, I'll stick with what works, and it's definitely going to keep working for forever. Yes, of course, Jeremy. And also, like, one thing that I also like to do when I'm doing any kind of modification is, um, this is just a tip, and probably many of you know this, so I apologize if I'm covering things you already know, but if you right-click on the page and you press inspect, it pulls up this viewer of the code, and what I'll do is I'll, like, highlight a certain section here. So it's showing me my alert, and over here, 
showing me the colors. And so I can actually change those if I want to. And I can go back into the code later. And if I like this color more than the color I had to set initially, I'll go back and change it. Um, that looks horrible. And this is all just like, this is not being saved at all. Once I refresh the page, this is gone, but it gives me the opportunity to just play around and see what options are available. Wow, that's bad. <laughs> so obviously you wanna be mindful of accessibility and contrast, of course. And then down here, I can see all the colors that are available, like just in the, I guess the root of Sakai. Um, so we have some brand colors here. So if I think if I did Sakai dash brand, dash dash darker too, I would get this, you know, these colors. Um, here's some more. So these are again, our colors that are just available. So I, these are the kind of colors I stick to, like when I'm messing with a course, I'll take a screenshot of this list and then I will just refer to teal lighter four. That's the one I want for this item. Um, one thing that, let me refresh this cause that's really obnoxious to look at. <laughs> um, like also one thing that's bothering me right now about this little box, this team leader best practices is I actually don't like that it doesn't have a border around it. I'd like to have a really thin gray border and um, maybe even just a little bit of a shadow. So again, what I do here, because I don't know coding well enough to be able to play around with it in the actual HTML is I'll pull it up and I'll kind of like just start fooling around with things. <laughs> until I can get something to work and which I'm not actually going to do live here because I think I even tried it and I couldn't get to work. But in general, when I'm trying to get something to work, order, I think something, I think I tried it and something in our CSS is overriding my overriding of, of the bordering. So I have not been able to get it to work, but I'm not ultimately, I, I oftentimes will just give up and I don't care that much about it because it doesn't look that bad. So I'll look up, you know, I'll Google whatever I need to do to like, how do you add a, color border around a box and it'll, it'll tell you like one pixel solid black or something and then i'll see it got it got it got uh overwritten i think so i don't know but in any case that's a nice way to just like play around google a little bit and then come back here and fiddle and then once you have something that actually looks like it's going to work then go to the text object and go to the source and try to apply it and see if that does the trick Modifying the templates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I mean, and also like I'm, I would love for us to do more in the template world just because they're so easy to just get started with. Um, so I, we might be doing more of that in the future, but these are just like nice little things. You can just click one button and I have my warning and um, some of these do need to be changed like this one, especially. Let me actually cancel out of that. The instructor insight, like whenever we last upgraded, our colors all got switched around. I think this is no longer accessible. One of these is no longer accessible. That's not that's not too bad. But there was one that like it looked really really bad. So we need to go back and change some of those colors. <clears throat> um. Yeah. So I can I can show more examples of stuff I've done, but uh, I will also take some questions if you have any at this point. <laughs> Yeah, we would like to do more with templates for sure. Um, we had at one point talked about building out like this whole menu of components for a lessons page. And I, I think we'd still like to do that. It's just a matter of like having enough resources, but we had even mocked up like, so we have, you know, we have the colors that we have available here, but we'd like to be able to even let someone specify a color they pick the color that they want, which <laughs> we've also found that giving people too many options sometimes can hurt them, whether they know it or not. Because what, what I can't stand a lot of times is if someone's got like, it's one thing if your colors like all kind of make sense together in some way, but I see people who just have, it's just an absolute, like it's way too many colors on the page. And so I, I try to tell people, I try to coach my faculty to be, more consistent with your or more intentional about your color choices so if you have if you for your sections for your course um you can specify like all all my maybe you'll say like all things with that are deliverables will be blue or all things that are readings are red um i typically stick to the one color thing just because that's to me that's easiest essentially um the one thing that i guess i have done with multiple colors is 
um, like, and, and it's, I don't think it's really working that well, but I'm trying to like specify that things are exclusively online. This is kind of, a, this is not even a real course. This is kind of like they're meeting occasionally, but students are supposed to be doing independent work, but it's not for credit. So it's weird. Um, but things that are in blue are meant to be mostly independent, but then things that have an in-person component are in red. And that's all spelled out up here, like before students even get started. Whether or not they've ever read that, I have no idea. But still, regardless, I'm using text within each page to say, this is, or I'll say, this is in person, this is online, so that they hopefully know it, it's a, it's both a visual or um, a color clue, which I know is not accessible, but then they also have it in text, so that is accessible. Um, but in terms of like components, we all, we had wanted to do uh, like a whole menu where any instructor could select whatever color they wanted for their sections. Um, we'd want to do a whole menu of different button types um, so that, you know, for any given button, you could change it. You could change the icon on the button or you could change um, the animation on the button. So when you go in here in layout and style, you'd have like several different customization customization options. Um, one, what, there, there are a couple other things. Oh, like a banner, we wanted to make it so that you could like type whatever you wanted and then pick a color or a gradient for a banner or a background image for a banner and it would just automatically be created. But we just, again, we haven't had time to do that kind of stuff. But we definitely have talked about it and would like to continue that work. Trying to think. Oh, I was going to show you our showcase. Um, here is also just a site where we've like played out a couple different like here are different options for buttons with different icons. Um, I don't really know what the different. I don't know why we made this section here. I hate these buttons. I would never, ever, ever, ever in a million years use these buttons. So you can tell this page is a little bit outdated. Yes, absolutely. Um, I will definitely get that to you. Were you, uh, Christina? Were you talking about the are you talking about these buttons here, or are you talking about like the buttons on, um, uh, yes, my email address, for anybody who wants I'll put it in the chat. Feel free to shoot me an email anytime. Um, but Christina, just let me know which, which button CSS files you wanted. I can give you this one that's probably easier to understand, or I can give you the one that's in my like my uh, orientation site that had all, it was like purple and rounded and had a ton of different icon options. I'm happy to share all that. So just I, I can I can just share you with all the button file all the button CSS files I have. Um, we so, oh here's some like header examples. So the the whole idea of this this oh I guess we didn't actually end up adding anything here. We don't often talk about this site. It's kind of like more of a reference for us. But we were trying to build a a site that we could just point people to to say like well here's some different examples of all the things we have available. Like here's our warning boxes. Um, here's our like a study tip thing, but we it's more like I will often more often go here when I'm just trying to demo things to people. Then I actually like will add somebody to the site for them to peruse. But this is a really nice place for us to go to our learning apps. Um, so like I said, we just actually built these all to be these are Suki tools. So I think these should all be now in, available in dark mode, but that doesn't look. I must have done something here because the learning app itself is showing up, but then this white box around it, it's not working. So I don't know. Oh, look at this. This is not good. We need to get that fixed because right? that's not anything custom happening. That link should be visible. Um, so all of our learning apps now work in dark mode. Um, but like I will often like pull up our, this is a polling learning app uh, study questions is a really really cool one that i like where like students can go in and post a question and um, you can upvote questions and downvote questions but you have to before you can see the answer you have to like you have to oh you don't have to maybe students i can't remember students have to answer it themselves before they get this option i can't remember but you can kind of like test yourself and the instructor can come and mark things as verified. So I hate to always talk about Sugi and learning apps because I know it's not available, but that's definitely something um, that I would hope could eventually become available for Sakai because it's similar to H5P is something I just learned about recently, but it's something that we built and it's open source and you have to, you know, I don't think you have to pay for it because it's just, you just go to learning apps and it's there. It's something that Dr. Chuck started a long time ago and 
um, we've just been using it to build more and more, more, and more tools. And at the upcoming um, Sakai conference, we're going to talk about tokens. My colleague Paul um, built this or had the idea for this tool where you can set like a, a number of tokens to be available to students for different categories. Um, I don't want to talk too much about it because I don't want to steal the thunder from Paul when he presents about it, but this has been a very popular learning app for us this semester. Um, students can like say, you know, you have four missed classes and you can just, the student will turn in a token and then the instructor gets a notification, they can accept the token or not. And then throughout the semester, your balance of tokens goes down. So definitely come to the conference to see more examples of that. Um, but yeah, we have a ton of different like SUGI learning apps that we just love to use. I'm always trying to get more folks to start using. Oh, that's my cat. Oh, butternut. Oh, what a baby. So this is our photo gallery learning app. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I, I don't, I hate to talk about things that are not related to CSS anymore, especially things that I know that we have, but we haven't been able to get to other people. Yeah, so I see a couple of people typing. I'm not sure if those are questions or just more kudos, but um, but I'd like to give you a big thank you, Julianne, um, for this stuff. And um, your tinkering with CSS reminds me of my usually error to figure out which colors and which classes go where. So um, so that's definitely a tried and true strategy out there. <laughs> Good. I'm we glad really I'm not appreciate alone in that. you. Yeah, we really appreciate you sharing all this stuff and kind of tips and tricks for people who've not tried it out. So, um, so that's that's really awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And um, maybe I think can I like post a link? Yeah, I can post a link in the um, agenda. So perhaps what I'll do after this is I will um, in my little CSS section on the agenda. Right, I can do links. Right here yeah yeah so i'll post links to the css files oh um, that would be great i'll try to like i'll try to even take the button stuff out so I'll, I'll do one that's just like kind of everything that i've ever had which is going to be impossible for anybody to read but then i'll do one that's just like a button css file um and maybe i'll try to split out like the checklist one too if i like i don't know why eh, and you don't want the checklist one the button one I'll, I'll i'll see if i can split out and maybe like the section headers if you wanted to customize section header colors so i'll try to i might not be able to get that today but sometime later this week maybe i'll post that if that's cool yeah that would be great okay cool i'm gonna stop sharing now um let's see i see a question in the chat uh from jennifer can sugi apps be loaded onto hosted sites or is that something we can do ourselves? Um, Sugi requires, um, a, you know, sort of a Sugi instance to be set up to run the apps. Um, so you could um, do something through Sugi Cloud with Dr. Chuck, or you could do some kind of self-hosted thing. I know in the past at Longsite, we've talked about po possibly hosting Sugi tools for people. We don't currently. Um, but it's something that I encourage you to ask about on your monthly call if you're a long site customer. Um, so, uh, but we are looking at, at alternatives for making more of those things available. Cause I know that um, University of Dayton has a huge collection of Suki tools that are really cool. Um, and we would love to, to make those easier for people to use. So, um, so yeah, if you want to express interest uh, to Josh and others at, at Longsite, that might kind of grease the wheels a little bit for uh, <laughs> making it easier to um, to be able to host those things. But as it is, you can host them elsewhere um, or have them hosted and integrate them just like you would any other LTI tool. I, I believe um, some folks at uh, LAMP have done that in the past. I don't know if they're still doing that with a couple of, of Sugi tools. Um, so it is certainly possible. Um, oh, Christina's saying 30 minutes after I got off the call with Derek. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Save it up for next time. <laughs> or shoot us an email. 
Um, and I should mention that um, at the virtual conference, the, the workshops that we'll be doing on day two, um, the materia widgets are similar to Sugi tools. They're sort of these little activities and things you can plug into a course, and, and they're also LTI. Um, so that's something that we're looking to make available to folks if they wanted to add those kinds of things to, um, to their Sakai courses. So just a quick plug for that. Um, do we have, let's see, Bonnie's asking if somebody could do a session on Sugi at SakaiCon. Um, we don't have it on the schedule currently, but um, if, if somebody wants to put in a proposal, yeah, I, we are get, hoping to get some lightning talks about I think the tokens one is a, a Sugi app. Is that in that right, um, Julianne? That's. Um, I'll. I need to get Paul to submit his his proposal for it. But yeah, tokens is a Sugi app, and he will definitely be talking about that. I mean, we. Are, I can talk about any of the. I, I don't know how to get Sugi working other places, but I can definitely talk about any of the Sugi tools that we have. Um, but in terms, like we're, we were, we were just a little bit, we're always a little bit reluctant to talk about them, just because we know that not everyone has the ability to use them. Um, but if people wanted to just see like a demo of the, our most popular ones, we'd be happy to. I would definitely encourage you to to put in different lightning talks for different tools because okay, they're cool. short. Yeah. So if there's a few favorites that you know people are always, um, you know, kind of excited about, then go ahead and put those in because we've got lots of lightning room. So okay, cool. <laughs> we Sounds need proposals. <laughs> um, so yeah, definitely. Jeremy, and um, we should know. talk offline a little bit to see if there's something we can do to, to get it to where it's a little easier to to have people um, have a hosted instance of, of Sugi apps. Because I know Dr. Chuck does some stuff with Sugi Cloud, but I'm not quite sure how all that works. So um, it would be nice to have a place to send people that want to have them uh, run with their instance. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, because Jeremy, I actually, I don't, I don't know how to get tokens added. We, I don't know, it's a, we just got it. We just got tokens ready, you know, for the start of the fall semester. So I don't know if it's just a matter of someone needs to press a button somewhere to like make it publicly available. I, I, I don't know, but I can certainly, I'll ask my team to see if I can figure out. Yeah. Oh, and just to answer Bonnie's question, um, no, you don't have to be hosted by Longsite to use Sugi. Um, Sugi is its own you know, installation. You just have to have a Sugi instance on a server somewhere that runs the apps that you're using. Um, so that could be hosted by your institution if you feel comfortable hosting. It could be hosted by someone else like Dr. Chuck, I think has a cloud instance where he hosts some things for people. Um, I think at you date and you guys host your own Sugi instance, correct? I, I think so. I know we're doing some stuff with Longsight now, but I know that Sakai for sure is all self-hosted. I would think that we also have a, I think, yeah. think Sugi is also self-hosted. Pretty sure. And I know like um, Sugi is also the way that Xerti works to do some of the LTI stuff. And um, you can have a, a Xerti instance that has Sugi on it. Um, so it's definitely a separate thing from Sakai or from long site hosting. So they're interchangeable. It's, it's kind of like a, a puzzle piece. You can, you can plug it into different things, but it can also exist on its own. Uh, Jennifer's question, there are different tools. Um, I, I just linked you to our store where we have most of our tools listed, but you'll note that tokens, I think, is not on there. So I, and I don't really know, I don't know why. <laughs> um, so again, these are things that I, I'm the person, my job is to sell the tool to people, which I also not successful at doing always, um, but I, I don't know how they work. <laughs> I should, but I do not. Yeah, yeah. So tokens isn't out on that. I think it's random. Randomly's on there. There's a couple of ones that are like more. Like, do we have check in on here? Yeah, we have. There's a lot we have that are not on this list, and I don't. I I don't know why, but 
we should probably. Yeah, I remember you sent me, you sent me a spreadsheet that had a huge list. I was like, wow, yeah. I didn't know you guys had that many. I know. <laughs> I don't think I knew at the time either. Yeah. So we should definitely find a way to make that more accessible to folks because it's a great list of tools. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll, we'll work on trying to get something together. I can't make any promises at this point, but, um, but yeah, I, I definitely would like to put them in more hands um, so that people can experiment. Yes. All right. Any other questions? All right. It looks like we've only got about eight minutes left. So I don't think we really have a lot of time to, um, to do any kind of JIRA um, feedback. So we'll save that for our next session, which will be on the 19th so in two weeks. Um, and then the one after that, um, we have um, scheduled an Educause debrief because that'll be after Educause and Didi and Christina will give us a kind of a, a report on what they learned and some of their key takeaways. So that'll be um, November 2nd. Uh, we'll get the Educause lowdown. Um, and then the following meeting lands on the same uh, week as the um, Sakai Virtual Conference. So there's no uh, teaching and learning call on the 16th because um, we'll be busy learning about other stuff. But um, but next time, which is in two weeks, um, we'll, we can pick up on some JIRAs or if there are any other topics that people would like to talk about um, and or present about, let me know and I'll be happy to add it to the agenda for next time. So um, once again, thank you so much, Julianne. This was super informative and um, and I think people are all excited about Sugi now too <laughs> as a side effect, even though we didn't plan to talk about that. So, so that's great. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, thank you so much and thanks everyone for attending and hopefully I will see you guys back here again in two weeks. So have a great rest of your day. Thank you.